Hello everyone, patch 2.0 is coming and with it Beshmundir Temple. This is a quite long instance with non-obvious quests and a lot of bosses in there deserve their own guide. It would take a video of one hour to explain everything, so I decided to split this guide in several parts. This video will be an overview, giving information about the requirements, the different quests there are, where the bosses are located, what they drop and in which order you're supposed to kill them, if you need to kill them at all. I'll begin by saying BT was changed in Korea and NA after a while. The route was simplified and the loots redistributed from a boss to another in order for a run to be finished faster. We are getting the original BT first and next patch will use the second route so I'll be covering both here. I will speak about hard mode as even my first run on NA was in hard mode and I cleaned it. Just be aware that on normal mode the bosses have less HP and their strategy changes to give you more reaction time. This is especially noticeable on Flare Storm, where the window to react is 10 seconds instead of 1. Beshmandir Temple is an instance which entrance is restricted to level 55 characters. It is located in Silentera Canyon which means your faction must control at least one fortress in Baloria if you want to access it. The campaigns will lead you here as you level up to 55, but you can enter without having them done. Bosses inside BT have around 2200 evasion and 1400 magic resistance. So try to have 2200 accuracy or 1400 magic accuracy. 1. First version. Inside BT, the route is convoluted. When you enter, clean every mob you can until there is only the first boss left. The door behind him will only open if you kill him. He's called Captain Lakara and is both a DPS and an IQ check, but even a bad group should be able to kill him if they're ready to die a lot. He only drops gold and a blue ring. Once he dies, the door behind him opens. Go ahead and take the stairs down on your left when you can. Your group should split in two to destroy the graves located in the back of each room in the right and left corridors. After a certain number of graves destroyed, a message will appear saying Abhana the Wicked has spawned. Move back to the middle room and talk to the NPC on the wooden pontoon. This will start a timer and teleport you to a small island. Kill everything on it and talk to the NPC again until you emptied three islands and you will reach the shore. Every emptied island will weaken the next boss on your way. The timer is a non-factor as you could be able to do it in time on your own. You're now facing Makunbelo, kill it for a chance to get Stormwing Gloves and exit the room by jumping down through the broken wall on the left. Run back to where you killed the first boss, Abana the Wicked has spawned in the adjacent room. Kill it for the Stormwing Boots and go straight on where you turned left earlier. You'll kill some statues and reach the great Virhana. He can drop gold armors and dagger sword of the Vorpal set. You usually use WoW and Walk for this boss and use the remaining time to run to one of the three following boss. Dorikiki, Taros or Flarestorm. To go to Dorakiki, hug the wall on the left and clean every shulak. Be wary of the invisible ones. They hurt and can one-shot you if you aggro too many at the same time. Dorakiki can drop you Stormwing Pauldrons. From there to the two other bosses, just follow the cliff. If you decided to go to one of the other two after the Great Virhana, hug the right wall instead. Flare Storm is locked behind a gate which needs a key to open. Since he drops Stormwing Shield and Dagger Sword, 
the key is usually farmed by people interested in this loot. I'll cover quests later in the video. It's a long and boring fight to drop Stormwing shields and Flare Storm dagger or sword. Taros is a horseman keeping the key of the door behind him. He only drops gold armor. From there, if you want to go back to Dorakiki, run back following the cliff that should be on your right. Once you dealt with these three bosses, make your way to Isbaria. He drops the Stormwing leg. After you kill him, use the orb behind him to open the rift to Stormwing. He awaits you in his arena and can drop the orange top and weapons as nice accessories and the best wings for now. 2. Second version. The second version basically ignores Makunbelo, Abana and Dorakiki. To get the same loot you will need to kill the Plaguebearer who now drops the Stormwing boots, Manadar who drops the gloves and Taros the pauldrons. This means you don't have to destroy the graves, but you still have to go there to find Plague Bearer and Manadar. Here is a summary of all bosses and what they drop. I didn't make this but couldn't find the source, so credit to the anonymous person who did it. If I didn't speak about a boss, it's because it's optional or locked behind a quest. You just have to know they still drop parts of the gold BT set so it might be worth to not ignore them. All eternal sets have a huge magic resist bonus along with two offensive stats except for chain which gets healing boost and accuracy. 3. Quests There are many quests in Beshmundir temple. The most obvious one is the campaign. A door can be opened behind Abana and interacting with the quest item will spawn a lot of mobs so be ready to handle them and don't go there alone. Doing this campaign really has no interest as you have to be 55 to complete it. One blue quest given by Teresa for Elios and by Ymir for Asmodians that will be done by your dual wielders and shield bearers is the one to get the incinerator key. The first time you take it, you will have several steps to do with a lot of mobs to kill a bit everywhere on the map. The key disappears when you use it but the following times you'll only have to kill 20 mobs for a key. You'll also notice a lot of the NPC in your capital city have quests for you with Decree of Valor as a reward. All these need to be done in Beshmundir, usually asking you to kill mobs or bosses. If you manage to earn a hundred of them, you'll be able to trade them for a gold belt, Adveseti for Elios, and Valletta for Asmos. Another quest item you will get in there is the special Shulak Refiner. It is used in the last step to transform any green weapon you get from the last boss in Taluk into a gold one with a unique and pretty skin. And last, there is a 10 quest long chain given by the same NPC. The first hard step is in Beshmundir. They'll ask you to kill 4 key keepers right after Taros to open their room and to kill the name boss inside. They don't drop anything interesting. I did it with the help of some friends who were glad to help. So shout out to JSA, Elfira, Blythe, CatCat, Adamstorm, Solitaire, Sunset, Lawrence, Infamous, and Katsuyu for carrying my content. After this, you'll have to go get a diary in Uda's temple. You can do this on your own if you don't have a fat ass and slalom between the Leferists. Next step is in Beshmundir. Again, you'll have to kill the Soul Caller. It's a boss in the room next to Lakara at the beginning of the instance. It's a quite easy boss as long as you keep a silence to interrupt his casting of earthly retribution. He can also get a reflect after casting punishment and has a fear when low HP. When done, you'll have some NPC to talk to along with killing some mobs in Balorea. You'll then be tasked to kill Shadow Shift to get an artifact to open the Stormwing Rift, kill some more mobs and finally kill Thurzon the Undying. Those two bosses are locked behind the right door in the corridor leading to the Great Virhana. They both drop three parts of the gold armor set, so they mostly get ignored, but their mechanics are quite special and you can enter the scoreboard quite easily.